Hi there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to show you how we can put some video reference into your file. The first thing we need is your video reference. Now, if you have a later version of Maya, then you can probably just use this straight away, but it's a bit slow and it involves video decompression and sometimes it can just slow the whole thing down. So it's probably not the best idea. What we can do instead is we can export our video as a sequence of images. So I'll go export and let me just open up that file. And I'm going in here because I want you to see what's needed. So I assume that you're using a Maya project and you've set your project you set your project inside here and we're going to export our stuff inside the source images. So I've got a folder inside here called reference and I've already actually done the stuff, but I'll get rid of that. And this is where we're going to output our video reference to. So I'll put it into this reference folder and I'll just call it ref and image sequence. Forget the dot mov. thinking maybe if I do the dot hash they'll do something anyway the point is that it's coming out I'm not sure if that hash actually does anything it does something in after effects no it does nothing here now I'll come back to this in a moment but that's not correct what Maya needs is a ref with a full stop and then the number and then the JPEG and I'll show you why that's a problem in a second let's jump across to Maya you bring an image plane into your perspective view by going view image plane import image and then select the first image in the sequence or any image in the sequence and click open and this is what you get if you haven't got the attribute editor open you go control a and that will bring the attribute editor up and you'll see down here in placement you've got size now you'll change that number and an easy way to do that is to hold down the control key middle mouse click and drag and that allows you to change the size so you can get it to something which is big enough for you to see what's going on and then you've got underneath there offset so you can offset it across and then up a little bit not too much about there say and then that's fine so now you've placed your image plane let's make it animate so you would start at your frame one and you'll see that's got use image sequence so you click on that button and normally when you've set things up properly it should move but it doesn't and why doesn't it? It's because of this. Maya is dumb. It needs things to say ref.000.jpg. So if you were exporting from some other program which allowed you to do that, say for example After Effects, everything would be fine. But if you if you haven't and you're already at this stage, there is an easy solution. Download a program called Sequence 911, SEQ911, and load in the reference image. Just click on the first image and it will jump up and load all the images of the entire sequence in and all we need to do is to put that little mysterious full stop in there it begins with ref and so that will now rename everything as ref full stop 001.jpg click renumber look over here in your files and you'll see now it's got that dot now watch what happens when I reload that one now when we change it it now works so this is if you're using an image sequence, obviously it's not going to be a problem if you're using a movie file. So, that's all well and good if that's all you want to do, but what if you want to trick your trick and, 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 and meddle and mess with the, the timing of your shot? If you're doing that, you need to not use this. This is purple in 2008. It could be another color in different versions, and that's an expression. You'll see this expression directly correlates the frame to the frame extension, this number, image number here. What we want to do is delete that and then go back to frame one, make this say image one, one, and, and the image number selected just over the, the word, not the number, right mouse click and go set key. And go to the end of your animation, say 466 in my case, and type in 466. I've got auto key on so that automatically keys it but if you don't have auto key on remember to right mouse click and set key so now you get exactly the same thing the difference is that if you open up the animation 
There we go. Just using the square brackets to jump back through my camera. And if that happens and you lose uh, the selection of the image plane, there's not a great drama because you can just go under View, Image Plane, Image Plane Attributes, and find that image plane. And you'll see as soon as I select that image plane, I'll do it again. I'll have that because I didn't focus on that. I've got my graph, and my graph. <laughs> Let's just not do that. My graph inside there is a one-to-one -one relationship. So at the top here, I've got 466 to 466. At the bottom, I've got one-to-one. -one. If for whatever reason, say in the middle, say at frame 150, you want things to slow down, you can set a key there, and then say middle mouse, go a little bit further across, middle mouse click and drag, and then set another one. So you can see that puts a bit of a dip inside there, so the frames tend to slow down so you get a bit of an ease in there and that would slow things down at that point but you don't want to do um, you don't want to really ease in or out from this so you would probably keep to linear that way there's no repeats it's never going to go back and, and do a second frame but that's going to give you a bit of a slow down between there and in the same vein if you wanted to pick up speed and get back to where you want it to be, say at 220, get back to catch up to where you want it to be. So you can type in 220 at frame 220, and now you're back to where you need to be. And again, I suggest using your linear keyframes. That way there's no jumping back. So that way you're massaging a curve, slowing that bit down. And as Sean also said, you could even go backwards. So say from, say from here to there, I want to go backwards, so from there, jump back a little bit so I can set a keyframe inside there and actually go backwards. So that would actually go backwards in time, so you'd have a bit of a, a max headroom. If you want to repeat something, that goes the arm across to there and then the arm goes back. So you can tinker around with it. But that's pretty much what he meant, is getting with your graph editor and being able to change your image sequences to metal with the editing. So there you go. If you enjoyed that, please pop past my workspace and say hi, give me some feedback. I'd really appreciate that and enjoy yourselves and I'll see you around. Bye.